Again, this is the Father of Connection. We're celebrating you today. And my name is Reggie Cox. I am the founder of the Father of Connection Executive Director. I believe that my strength as a parent is one that's able to be approachable. I believe that I'm approachable. I'm able to, to adjust and relate to anyone coming to me, even if my um, opinion is different than theirs, you can still approach me. I think that's a strength that I bring to the table. There are six areas that we're going to talk about. I don't think we need that many. There are six areas that we're going to talk about that um, fatherless impacts, okay? Six areas. So if you look at the side where it says, it's going to be the opposite side here for you. It says there are six areas that are strongly impacted by fatherlessness, okay? And so there should be extras going around. All right. Six areas that are impacted by fatherlessness. The first one is poverty. The second one is drug and alcohol abuse. The third one is physical and emotional health. The fourth one is educational achievement. The fifth one is crime. And the sixth one is sexual activity and teen pregnancy. And so I'm identifying which one I think that it affects you the most. Yeah, that affects me the most, okay? okay? Now, the truth is, I got a couple of them out of the six, okay? okay? And so, again, my father was an alcoholic. His father was an alcoholic. My father said, I'm not going to be like his father, right? It was just like him, Jermaine. And then I said, guess what? I'm not going to be like my dad, and guess what I was? Just like him, okay? So what I saw, I became. So I had to break the pattern. Let me see the hands of those people that are working on breaking some patterns. Okay, all right, so good. We're in the right house, okay? So these patterns must be broken because of what I saw I became. So I'm looking at, out of the six areas, there's one, there's a couple of them that I really can look at, especially um, the drug and alcohol abuse, right? Um, being, you know, alcoholic, um, substance abuse, things of that nature. That was the one that I think that impacted me big time. Um, another one is number six, um, active sexual activity and teen pregnancy. I also was a womanizer, mm. right? And so again, a part of my addiction was really being addiction, addicted to sex, sex and pornography and all those things. Um, those are the things that I picked up to cope with the wounded me, okay? Inside of me is a boy who's been wounded. He's been abandoned, he's been hurt. And so the way that I coped, y'all with me here? Mm -hmm. The way that I learned to cope, Debbie, was to pick up other things. Rather be sex, rather be drugs. I picked that up to cope with the wounded Reggie, the little boy in me, okay? Now watch this. I'm an adult today of 58 years old, but I got a boy in me, okay? So let's go here for a minute. How many of us are recognizing the either girl or the boy though? I mean, how many, how many of us can recognize it? Okay. And real quick, I'm gonna ask you this question, right? Watch this. I'm gonna ask this question. When was the last time for you the girl spoke? When was the last time for you all the men? When was the last time the boy spoke? Hmm. Alright? Who wanna take that shot real quick? Hey, can you think you're going in? Yeah, man. Alright. <laughs> so when was the time the last time the girl spoke, Debbie? Do you hear her voice recently? Yeah, when I was, um, I still feel like I'm in my 20s. Yes. What did she say? What did that little girl say? Um, you're doing good now. Okay. So the girl said you're doing good. So that's encouragement. That's great, Debbie. All right. My boy usually would want to have his way. Mm -hmm. Right? He ain't trying to, he, he like, he wants, he's a bully. Right? He'd be like, yo, the boy usually, or the girl usually, is like the two-year-old toddler, right? Mm -hmm. And the two-year-old toddler is very selfish, very demanding, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and whatever he see you got, when he wants it, right. right? And so he throws his temper tantrum often. Like, for example, one of the things the boy said, look, man, it's being ready to rain. You know, you shouldn't even go in here, man, today, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, just you know, chill out. Go, go. Right. It's funny. It's funny because, I, I, you know, I was put in the spot this weekend, right? I, uh, I got permission to go out and spend the weekend with my kid, and I was with my ex. And um, I started bonding with her father, my, my son's grandfather. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm in the house, and, you know, I just came out of prison, and I haven't had no sexual contact or anything. And the boy, 
in me is saying, well, you know, react this way. Go yes. do this. And yes. Go do that. And she sort of actually tempted me too. Yes. And believe it or not, Monday morning when the kids got on the bus, the kids were the ones that saved me, believe wow. it or not. Because every time she got a five-year-old, every time something would happen, he would come and get affectionate with her and it'll break the moment. Mm -hmm. And I didn't trust myself being in the house by herself. So when the kids got on the bus, that's when I got in the car and left. Wow. And that was my little boy talking like, okay, because I was, what was it? Robert. I was telling Robert, you know, like trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. To me, sometimes it was so easy for me to do the wrong thing. Come on, dude. Yeah. You're talking yeah. to us, man. and right now I'm trying to do, doing the right thing. Yes, it's always a challenge. It is. It's you know it's a challenge, but it makes me feel so much better if I do the right thing. Come on, y'all, let's give it up, man. Awesome, man. Awesome. So yes, you're identifying that boy. Anybody else want to identify the boy or in him? Well, I I, I can I can identify the boy in me. Um, like I said, um, I'm trying to break that cycle, and I have like seven kids in my home. Okay. You know, ranging from the age of 30 all the way down to the age of six. You know, two on biological lines, the other ones are not. And, 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 and they range from one to all of these things that are hitting and impacting their lives. Yes. But what I try and, what I try and do is, I try to be consistent. Mm -hmm. However, my consistency in their lives, understand me, puts me in a, in a point where the little boy shows up in me where um, I want to control some stuff. Yes. You know, I want to control some stuff. Yes. And, 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 and I need to be a little bit more patient and allow them to, to grow through the stuff that they need to grow through. Awesome. You know what I'm saying? And, awesome. I, and I see that, you know. Am I good every day with it? No, I'm not. Do I get better every day? Yes, I do, because I try to change something that I did yesterday, you know, today. That's good. So, Robin, what's one thing, and you say patience, what's, the, what's one thing that continually try your patience? Give me a behavior. Um, defiance. So the defiance from the kid. Yeah, the, the, the defiance. You know, a lot of kids nowadays, I know it all. I know it all. I know it all. And, and I'm saying I'm 58 years old, and I don't know it all. Mm -hmm. You only 16. <laughs> I got 42 years on you. Right, right. I got three college degrees, understand me, under my okay. belt, understand me. And I don't know it all. You barely got through high school. How can you possibly know that? Okay. And trying to get them to understand the fact that we really don't, and, and that defiance, you know what I'm saying? Can I speak to you? Because um, we're going to talk about this, and, and Kenny, anytime you want to come up or add, feel free. We were talking about, um, as we do our introduction, which we're just getting ready to start, your strength as a parent. And so one of the things that you're strong with is dealing with kids who are defiant. Now watch this. It may appear that that's your struggle, mm -hmm. but there's a communication and there's a... Watch this. There's a, there's a level and degree of you being able to engage them and approach them from a different way that don't provoke more defiance. Right. In other words, I have to be able to relate to them in such a way that I will cause them to come out of that prison of defiance. Because if they don't, they will end up then where life has to be able to put them in restriction. Yeah. And so they've been assigned to you. Yeah. Oh, that's good right there. That's good right there. They've been assigned to you because you're the best one for the job. Can we give a hand for Robert? And for Robert, one of the things that we want to do today is to empower that part of you, right? That even though defiance might be your struggle and the thing that really, that little boy, just it just, it just trigger you, you are the tutor. You are the teacher. Right? And there's a giftedness and there's an area of expertise that you bring second to none. Because you have a set of skills like nobody else. Let's say that together. I have, I have, I have a set of skills, set of skills, skills second, to none. second to none. In other words, in other words, I'm the best. 
I'm the best. best. At what I do. At what, what I, I do. do. One more time. I have, I have a set of skills, a set of skills second, to none. second to none. I am the best. I am the best. I am the best. I am the best. At what I do. And what and what I, I do. Now give yourself a hand right there. That's a good place to do that. Now whether we believe it or not yet, right, that's something that hopefully we will be persuaded to see. But we were created with a set of skills second to none. You were designed to solve a problem. All right, so let's move, let's move on. We're going to do our introductions, our name, how many kids, and your strength as a parent. And so, Robert, you kind of already hit on the area, but I don't know if anybody else. Who wants to go next? No. Okay, your name? Um, Kelly. Um, I have one daughter, two, one season, one daughter, 26 years old. Um, my strengths are I'm approachable, like similar to what you said. We can talk, she tells me stuff that she won't tell her mother. But yeah, we still have boundaries, you know, so you don't be too cool, you know what I mean? Yes. I don't think everything. But um, yeah, that's my strength. Okay. You know? So you're approachable. Approachable. Okay. <clears throat> well, Question of the day, out of the six areas on this page, oh, okay. which your... one impacts you the most? Uh, Was your father three. involved in your yeah. life? Yeah. Okay, hit those three areas. Sorry. Some more. Yeah. This yeah. should be some work. Here's, here's a couple of uh -huh. Drug abuse. So you can relate to what I said then. Yeah, exactly. Right. Pretty much exactly. Uh, sexual activity, you know, you know, you know. So yeah. Yes, yes. And um, something about the crime thing too. Okay. That he ain't have nothing to do with that. <laughs> you don't think so? No. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he might have, right? Yeah, he might have. You may not have known about it. Um, and he I may not have... To get attention because I didn't have to do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. No. Okay. All right, well, thanks, man. Yeah. For you, you've identified three areas. Right. Crime, um, substance abuse, or drug, drug and alcohol sexual abuse, activity. and sexual um, activity. activity in teen, teenage pregnancy. How old were you when you had your first child? Oh, I was old. I was like 26. Okay. So I was real... Permis yeah, as a young adult. Yeah. yeah. So would you call that a uh, drug of choice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Because yeah. when we think of drug of choice, yeah. we always think about yeah. just alcohol, substance abuse, pills, or whatever. But sex, yeah. right? How many people know this? That heroin, I mean, when when there's an actual orgasm, that is even greater than heroin. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's deep, ain't it, y'all? That right? relieves stress. Yes, yes, okay? And it relieves that stress. But watch this. We were created and designed, right, to have chemical endorphins con to, to react so that we didn't need external things to get high off. We were created, right? right? The, the truth of the matter is we were designed to have that stimulus already made up in us when we fulfill our purpose and our sign in. Okay. You, you know what, Reggie? That's that's crazy because I I just found that out because I started practicing yoga. Okay. And there's certain poses yes. that brings their morphins out. Yeah. I'm um, back bending and stuff like that. Yeah. You actually catch that buzz, and I I wish I would have noticed it or realized it years ago. But it ain't too late. No, it's never too late. Right. <laughs> so now you share that, right? Absolutely. In every sphere of influence like you're doing right now. Yeah. You share that, boom, right? Yeah. You make sure that your voice is heard in that arena. And I'm going to help you, right? <laughs> you just helped me just then, okay? So let's give it up, y'all. That's great. All right, let's move on. Next. Anybody? All right. Okay. My name is Joe. I have a, uh, two and a two two-and-a-half-year-old boy. Your strength as a parent is? Well, my strength as a parent is I show enough love to my son, and I try my best as I can as an adult to discipline him in the right way. Yes. If what he's doing is not straight. Awesome. Right. So you're, to show him love and to discipline him. We have a workshop that called Discipline, remember Kenny, yeah. versus punishment. Yeah. Right? Sure. And how punishment really deals with... Um, it really um, penalizes you. Where discipline, it, the word discipline comes from disciple, and what it really means is to teach and to guide. Totally different than penalize, right? 
And so again, discipline is one thing, um, punishment is another. So that's powerful, George, what you're saying. All right? Sounds like you're doing a great job with that, man. All right? So let's move on. Question of the day. Out of the six areas, George, um, that are on that sheet, which one stands out to you the most or you've been affected by? Well, uh, when it comes to this, there was a point in my life where the only thing I used to have a depression, the only thing that was really helpful that I thought, it was a childish at that time, I thought was helping me was sexual activity and also drinking. And drinking, okay. Uh, I was thinking like drink, taking alcohol yes. was the best way of dealing with that issue. Yes. But year, a year or two later, I realized that I wasn't helping myself. I was actually punishing myself because the, the more you take alcohol, uh -huh. at that moment you feel like, oh, it's gone, but it's adding more trouble. Yes. You. Your thinking is not going to be right. It's, you're going to be more depressed. That's awesome. So, yes. After some years later, and I came back and realized that no, this is not helping. The right help I needed was getting the help, the medical help. And after getting that and taking away with alcohol, it has really helped me. My thinking has been focused. So I would say, um, I was thinking sexual activities and also thinking of aqua was a way of resolving my issue, but yes. I was hiding behind. Awesome. Problem.